of the program. All right, let's now get into that discussion. As Alia mentioned, my guest in studio to help us discuss the issues around the World Environment Day, are Benson Ocheng, who is an expert in environmental science, as well as Jackson Bumbo for the, from the Kenya Forest Working Group. I will definitely start with that question I'm asking our viewers. Do you think Kenya has done enough to save the environment? Well, uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me today. Uh, small correction, I'm mm -hmm. an environmental lawyer. Ah, oh, great. Not thank you for that. Scientist. <laughs> yes. Um, it's a difficult question to say whether Kenya has done enough, mm -hmm. but I, at least it's good to understand that Kenya is doing something mm -hmm. about the environment. Mm -hmm. And of course, just one of the things you've mentioned, yeah. a problem that has dogged us in this country for a while, mm -hmm. the issue of plastic bags. Mm -hmm. And as with every big issue, there is always controversy around it. And uh, just more or less in the manner that yeah. you see it happening in the United States about jobs and about uh, science of the whole issue, you see the private sector coming in very strongly to say, well, you're going to kill jobs. Yes. You're going to put us out of business. This is not going to be competitive. So that is a monumental step. Mm. The fact also that we host the United Nations Environment, mm -hmm. uh, previously UNEP, uh, is a big issue. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, UNEP didn't just come to Nairobi mm -hmm. for the sake of Definitely. it. Somebody had to work yeah. to make sure that it comes to Nairobi. Oh, and right. that was a major coup mm -hmm. in terms of what Kenya is doing about environment and what the agenda is mm -hmm. uh, in terms of Kenya's uh, political, economic right. uh, positioning. OK, Jackson. Right. Yeah, thank you so much for the invite. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Mine is to say that as a country, a number of issues we've tried. For instance, when you look at the policy, mm -hmm. policy issues, we start with the constitution. Mm -hmm. It recognizes 10% recover, mm -hmm. which we need to aim at. Then we also talk uh, of the Climate Change mm -hmm. Act 2016. That also has something to mm -hmm. do with climate change. Then we also have the Forest Act of 2016. All these policies, if you look at them, they are mobilizing Kenyans and also uh, streamlining the issues with the industrialization so that we move towards 10% tree mm -hmm. cover. Mm -hmm. Then uh, if you look at the curriculum, a lot of emphasis is being put on environmental issues. I'm also aware that uh, the minister, the CS the other day also uh, put a ban on the, on the plastic bags. Mm -hmm. So what we are waiting for is that if the president will sign it, then we'll be really sure that mm -hmm. something is being done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So um, this year's theme is uh, connecting uh, people to nature. Just how, in terms of the years that have already passed just before this day, yeah. how do you think Kenyans have related to nature in, in terms of them taking a leading role in caring for the environment? Well, uh, in terms of relationship, I think the fact is livelihoods in Kenya is very much connected to nature. Uh, understanding that ours is principally still a rural population, uh, people depend directly on the environment for food, for water, for all other facets. Literally everything, uh, Literally actually. everything. Yeah. And so right from there, you see the connection with nature. Uh, there are communities, particularly the more indigenous communities who... Uh, depend directly on nature forests. We've heard many times about the Ogiek, and if you go to coastal Kenya, you hear a lot about the Kayas and the Kaya forests, which have got very close connection with the day-to-day -day lives mm -hmm. of people. So at a general level, Kenya's population is very much connected to nature. Uh, it could be a different ball game if you go back to the question you are concerned about whether mm -hmm. Kenya is doing enough. Yeah. Uh, to 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 con conserve the environment. Mm. Um, it depends on whether you want to see the glass half full or half or empty. Half empty. <laughs> because just as uh, it has been stated, the constitution is very clear on the country's position in relation to the environment. Mm. Uh, right from the preamble, it acknowledges the importance of the environment. Our whole chapter five is dedicated to land and environment. and environment. And the environment has been made to be a fundamental human right if you look at Article 42 of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And clear provisions have been made in terms of how to ensure that citizens enjoy the right to the clean and healthy environment mm -hmm. uh, through access to information, ensuring public participation, and of course, ensuring that people have access to justice mm -hmm. 
if they have grievances in relation to the environment. So, of course, there is still a long way to go. Mm -hmm. There can be questions around whether the government is committed enough. Yeah. Which commitment on the side of government is always the question of putting your pocket, your, your, your money where your mouth mm -hmm. is. Uh, and basically, we have had serious issues about whether we are allocating enough money or enough resources to conserve the environment. And sometimes whether we are putting in place the right mechanisms and strong enough <laughs> to ensure that we achieve the objectives which we expose uh, as a country. And some of these manifest in different facets. I mean, we've had serious issues with poaching in this country. And many times when you get into that domain, you find that there is a degree of complicity and sometimes very high ranking government officials or institutions are, are implicated in, in some of those concerns. Uh, sometimes it's a question of why it takes so long to pass certain legislation that are important. For example, if you go to the issue of uh, uh, basically uh, environmental laws and policies that are required, or the regulations that are supposed to be in place, you see a lot of controversy. And even where we sometimes have the laws and policies, you don't see as much enforcement and much commitment mm. in terms of bringing culprits to book. So those are questions that we need to look at. Still, depends on how you look at it. Glass exactly. half full or, or, or glass half empty. Sure. Jackson, you work uh, with the Kenya Forests uh, Working Group, yes. I, I, I believe. And um, every other time someone mentions environmental, they what a Kenyan would think is planting trees. Just how good are we at it? Because as much as we plant trees, in the same breath, we are cutting down as many trees as well. Okay, basically all this boils down to how are we connected with nature. For instance, look at the energy we use. It's basically 80% nature. Nature in the sense that we use fuel wood and charcoal. Mm. For the urban, it's charcoal. For the rural, it's fuel wood and uh, look at again what are we using to cook we use water water comes from the forests or the streams that we talk about all this thing is related to nature look at where we live housing housing is done using nature timber is from the trees and when we look at uh, now planting trees kenyans they are known to be planting trees they don't go grow trees we need to move from planting to growing to grow trees because we need to plant and ensure that they survive to maturity so that we ensure that what we consume or what we utilize is sustainable because what is in Kenya is that we plant trees and nobody ensures that they grow to maturity. We've been planting in Mao for many years, many years, but I tell you if we go to Mao, Cherangani, Ebobut, it's pathetic. So what our approach is wrong? It's the approach and also the willingness of the people. They don't see the, the importance of this forest because I guess basically we need to do more in terms of sensitization. Mm -hmm. We also need to ensure that people know what is the really benefit of, uh, of trees and even wildlife. Can you tell me the cost of an elephant? But I can tell you the cost of a price of timber. So this, uh, we need to do the costing of our wildlife and also the costing of our nature mm -hmm. so that we ensure that every tree Every elephant or any wildlife that we talk about, we know the cost implication associated with it. As, as uh, the Kenya Forest Working Group, what do you do to ensure that we graduate from just planting trees to growing them? Okay, uh, one thing that we are doing, we are also sensitizing communities, the indigenous communities. We are also ensuring that you also participate in the noble or national events like this one, where we engage communities in planting trees and also doing a lot of cleanups. Because with the polythene thing in place, they clog our drainage systems. And once it's clogged, it means we have to have uh, drainage problems. So one of the things that we are also doing is to sensitize communities. Mm -hmm. And we start with this one from the school, the primary school level. And we also engage the university students through co uh, an event called Mazingira Quiz Challenge, which brings universities together to mm -hmm. compete on various, various tropical issues ranging from climate change forest, wildlife, marine, and even uh, issues to do with uh, our behaviors as students and as youth. So we need to look at what it drives us to do things that are not re uh, legally sound. All right. For, yeah. All right. Benson, 
earlier on when we were starting this conversation, you delved into the issue of the ban of plastics, right. and it continues to be a conversation. The other day, the East Africa Legislative Assembly uh, passed a bill that it should be banned in all the other uh, East African countries. But of course, we've had the politics that have come in and the complaints from the private sector about jobs, among other things. What would be the best approach to handle this particular situation? Well, the, the tension between economics and the environment and human rights is one that is long standing. And uh, in our case, we should understand that there is always the need for balance uh, among the three. And that is why we talk about sustainable development. Uh, I think if you examine it clearly, the private sector have a point uh, that uh, if you go for wholesome uh, decisions like burning of plastic bags, mm -hmm. you're basically affecting industry, you're affecting livelihoods, and of course you're affecting production. On the other hand, there is always a cost to the issue of plastics and the damage that it causes, clogging sewers. Yeah and particularly during flooding, you see what happens in Nairobi, the destruction that occurs, the loss of lives. And of course, uh, plastic bags is a menace. Of course, then you go to other issues of, of, of equity. Uh, what about, uh, you have to worry about the overall impacts on the rights of other people who also have a right to use the environment. And that is why the convergence or the solution is always to look at the balance where the economics and the issues of equity or rights and of course the environmental needs can converge. When you get that right, then basically you are, to, you are on your path to resolving the, 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 the problem. The problem usually is that you have sticklers on all ends of this divide where the economics or industry sometimes think that theirs is absolute production and they don't need to worry about the other issues of rights and the other issues of environment. And I think that is where we get it wrong. Overall, of course, I am biased towards this. I think other countries have succeeded without those plastics. You get to Rwanda or Kigali, the first thing that they check is whether you are carrying plastic bags. You go to the city and it is clean. They are not doing a lot poorer than us because of that. And uh, it is the case in, other de in the developed world. So it is the question of consciousness and the goodwill that we need to bring into the debate. Okay. Of course, there is always a negative impact if you don't give some people, people leading time to prepare themselves to change their system of production and some of these goods. All right. But I think in the case of Kenya, we've been talking about burning plastic bags for a while. Yeah. And I think that we have been doing it for a long while. The decision must be properly informed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Just before we close, what does this ban mean for you? The ban, uh, the ban for for us is a, a right thing in the right mm -hmm. direction. Mm -hmm. For instance, if it is implemented, you can ban several times, but is it? Implemented. implemented. That's the question. All right. So the government should move with the speed, and as individuals, we should also start at our homes. All right. Thank yeah. you so much, uh, gentlemen, for coming in. Benson Echeng, an environmental lawyer, and uh, Jackson Baum.